Hi, I'm Phil and you're watching The Joy of Electronics. Today, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to power uh, guitar effects pedals. Now, there's a bunch of ways to do this and there's a bunch of reasons why we do it certain ways. Um, so let's get into it. Most guitar effects pedals are powered by 9 volts DC. Uh, a lot of times with a battery, so we'll pretend this is our guitar effect PC board. I've got a battery here, so the easiest way to power this would be to just use one of these 9 volt battery adapters. <clears throat> so we'll draw it on. Here's our little battery adapter with its terminals and the ground goes to our effect. We'll just put that there and the 9 volt positive goes to our effect. Um, the problem with this setup is that the effect is always on, the battery is always draining, it's not going to last at all and that's no good. So one of the ways we can get around this is to add a switch to the the battery. Now if we were to hook it right to say the stomp switch so that it turned on the power when we turned on the effect or when we engaged the effect or we stepped out of bypass or whatnot, you'd get a big pop and in some cases there'd be a delay with the effect so generally uh, you do not want to switch the power when you engage the effect. You want the effect to already be powered when you engage it so you there's no pop and there's no delay in the effect engaging. So we, we can't attach it to the stomp switch. So one of the ways uh, this can be done is we'll start a new circuit here is by turning on the power when uh, either an input is plugged in or an output is plugged in. And we can do that simply with a stereo jack instead of a mono jack. So this is a stereo jack you know, it's intended generally for this type of quarter inch plug. You can see we've got uh, two connections here that are made, what we call the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. Now the tip and the ring are for the two stereo channels usually, and the sleeve is for the ground. But in this case, we're going to use the ring and the sleeve as a switch. You can see in stereo they're separate. But if we compare that to the mono plug used for uh, guitar, in most cases, this is just one solid contact, which means when we plug this mono plug into the jack, it actually connects the ring terminal to the sleeve terminal. So let's draw that out here. So. Get our battery terminal again, and this time we'll do our, that's our sleeve, uh, we'll call that our ring, and there's the tip terminal. So in general it's going to go like that, I mean it's not the right size, but you, you get the idea. So the way we wire this up now, we'll put our engage our battery is our positive 9 volts can still go directly to our effect PC board. But our ground is going to go to the ring of the input jack. And then from the sleeve of the input jack, we're going to go to our effect pedal. So what happens now is that if nothing is plugged into this input jack, the ring and the sleeve have no contact but as soon as a mono plug is plugged in the ring is connected to the sleeve and the circuit between is connected so our ground from our battery is connected to the ground on the effect pedal and the power is turned on and our effect is ready to use we unplug this the power is cut so this is this can be done on either the, the input jack or the output jack uh, or both, I suppose, that, that might be a bit overkill. I mean, as long as the user knows which one to unplug to turn off the power, they can do that when they're done using the effect um, and they're going to save their battery. So that's 
some setups or the, the main setup for battery usage. Now the other part of the puzzle is uh, AC. So if you want to plug your pedal in, um, the best setup in my opinion is AC and battery options. So if you're on the go, you can use a battery, uh, but if you have an adapter, uh, you can use that too. So the way we do that, let's get a new piece of paper, is using one of these AC jacks. Now you can see this has three connections where, uh, you know, um, if you were to look at it uh, from a simple perspective, uh, you'd only need two. You need positive and negative, but we have three because there's a switch here. When nothing is plugged in to this AC jack, these two terminals are actually connected. So what we do is we use this for the 9 volts and then we use this for the ground. So we can do two switches here. What we're going to do, and I'll show you, is let's put our circuit back together. We'll get our battery connector here and we'll have our our input jack here with ring and tip and this time we'll have our AC jack over here and it has a terminal here and it has a terminal here and a terminal here so we'll look at that as if it was in this orientation so now as I said when nothing's plugged in to the AC jack, these two terminals are connected together. And we're going to use that to switch our positive 9 volts on and off from the, from the battery. So what we do here is the same thing with our ground, except we're going to stop off at the AC jack first. So we'll go here to our AC jack, and then we'll go over here to our ring, and then from our sleeve on the input, we'll go to our effects pedal. So we've got our ground switched on the input jack. Now for the 9 volts from the battery, we're actually going to go to this inner terminal. Um, and that would be this terminal here. So with nothing plugged in, that terminal is connected to this terminal. Now from this terminal, we're gonna make a leap here over those and we're gonna go to our effects pedal. Sorry about the crossover there, but that's how it works. Um, you know, if these are wires, we wouldn't have to do that jump. So, what happens here is because nothing's plugged into this jack, our battery nine volts actually goes right through this connection and to our pedal, our, our effect board. And the ground, again goes through the switching we talked about previously. So in this setup, when we have a mono jack plugged into the input, we have a fully connected circuit when nothing's plugged in to the AC jack. Now this changes when we plug something into the AC jack. When something plugs into this AC jack, Now all of a sudden, the physical aspect of plugging this in actually detaches this lead. So the battery is now no longer attached. These become disconnected as a mechanical operation of this actual uh, jack and the plug being pushed in. Uh, what that means is the battery is no longer connected to our effect, but that's okay because the AC is. now. This 9 volts is coming right from our AC and our ground is still switched by the input. So in this sense, we're both switching on the ground at the input jack and we're switching our battery off when we plug in our AC. We don't want the battery and the AC both connected to the circuit at the same time. Uh, bad things are going to happen there. Your battery's going to get hot or, or swell or leak or something like that and it's probably not good for your circuit either. So. This is going to move if I take my hand off and put a little transformer on it. There we go. So, but by switch, using one of these jacks to switch it off when the AC is plugged in, then our battery is safe and our circuit is using AC. 
So this is the kind of setup you're going to want to use for most guitar effects pedals that run off of 9 volts. You have a battery that is switched off with uh, one of these AC jacks with uh, three leads. And then you're going to want to have the ground switched on either the input jack or the output jack. I've seen both, whatever your preference. So now we're going to look at how this works in an actual pedal and we'll, we'll do some wiring. Okay, here we've got a pedal that's somewhat wired up and we're going to do some more wiring. You see here we've got an AC jack and I've already wired up the power from the AC going to the effects circuit board, this red wire here. And I've also got the ground from the circuit board wired up to, it's going to be hard to see in there, wired up, oh it's not soldered, but it's just hooked on the uh, sleeve terminal there uh, of the input stereo jack. So what we're going to do first is uh, if we refer back to the plan would be to wire um, the battery adapter to the AC jack uh, and then wire the ground of the AC jack over to um, the ring of our input jack. So these leads are a bit long but I think I'll trim them after after soldering. How do we want to orient this? I mean that's not bad. We'll go no, we'll do one at a time. Uh, I can't quite do the ground yet because I need to cut another wire to do the, um, the... I have to put two leads on that ground, one coming in from the battery and the other going out to the ring terminal of our input. So I'll leave that just for now and I'll solder up the the 9 volt lead of the battery. Okay, where'd my flush cutters go? There we are, so I'll just trim off the excess there. Dump that out. Now, get some length of black wire here to do our ground to the ring terminal. up. We'll pop it through here along with the battery ground and we'll just solder that up quickly. Okay, so our battery is now connected, and I'll just figure out how exactly I want to bend this. Probably down right to the chassis or the enclosure. If you can see, and then bend around, and we want to go to the ring, so it's actually at the kind of above. So we'll come up along the top. Now it's looking like we're going to have to go right to the side. So this green wire is actually going to go to a pot. So we'll just bend that out of the way for now. So we're going to go right to the edge of the enclosure. I like using these needle nose for bends. 
pretty precise once you can get the the wire um, kind of leaning the way you want it'll stay Put that down in there pretty good it should stay once we get it soldered up bend over bend over there we go I like to run wires along the outside, keeps things relatively clean. So we're going to come down. There's the ring terminal there. So we'll just strip this last portion off. It's obviously way too much, but that's fine. Create a good mechanical connection there. And that's looking pretty good. I'll just solder that one. Let me think. No, that's that's the only one we need there because this is the ground from our power source now it's, uh, it's going to be the ground from both the AC adapter always and the ground from the battery always it doesn't it doesn't switch but what does switch is that as we talked about it's only connected to the circuit board or the rest of the ground circuit when there is a plug plugged into the input jack there. So, we'll get this, this one out of the way. What else for the power? I think that's pretty much it for the power. Um, obviously there's more wiring to do in this pedal, but now you can see that I've got the battery adapter. It's soldered to the AC adapter in the switch terminal. This terminal is going to be disconnected when an AC adapter is plugged in. The other terminal, positive 9 volt terminal of the AC adapter is wired right to the circuit board. That's going to provide the power. Um, if nothing's plugged into the AC, that's going to provide power right from the battery because these two are connected. And if something is plugged into the AC, that's going to provide power right from the AC, right from the wall adapter. And our ground is going to the ground on the AC adapter from the battery adapter and then it's going around to the ring terminal of the input jack, of the stereo input jack, uh, and then the ground to our PC board is on the sleeve terminal of the input jack. I haven't wired that, or I haven't soldered that because I have to attach one more ground um, that's gonna go to the LED, um, so I'll do that later. Uh, but for now, that's it, that's how you wire the power to a 9 volt guitar effects pedal in order to not only switch the battery out of the circuit when you plug in an AC adapter, but only turn the power on, only enable the battery or the AC when a lead or a quarter inch plug is plugged into the input jack. This has been the joy of electronics and we'll see you next time.